dear friends, we very cordially welcome you all to this contemplative meeting of the Golden Rosy Cross. We are happy that you, in your quest for answers, for giving meaning to your life, can join us in this special moment and experience together a clear impression of something pure, the touch of the gnosis, that can guide us if we allow it in our quest, not as an external teacher, a master, a system of precepts, but as an inner impulse, a radiation of a very high vibration that connects directly with the deepest depth of our being. Living in the present and not in the past or in the future has since time immemorial been propagated. From words in the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu of approximately 2,600 years ago, or by the Sufi mystic Rumi in the 13th century in Persia, to authors and thinkers closer to our time like Krishnamurti or Eckhart Tolle, millions of people have been inspired to detach from the personal time-bound thinking. By staying in the present, we may come in touch with our true self or a broader consciousness. The advice is to stop our never-ending stream of thoughts filled with expectations, with worries and feelings about things which may have been relevant in the past or may be relevant in the future. An important advice is accepting what is happening, observing it without judging and without resisting. This present can be also described as entering a state of silence. Also, in this time together we hope to become silent for a moment and to detach ourselves from our, all our daily worries and the small or large worries and problems that continuously ask for our attention. Today, we would like to discuss the possibilities that becoming silent can offer. This becoming silent creates an inner space. The great questions now are, with what will we fill this space? What broadening perspectives will this space open? Does this space offer the possibility of coming into contact with our true self. 
Are we even able to engender true silence within ourselves? And what actually is our true self? The Rosicrucians consider this becoming silent in the present, the condition for being able to build the new, true, inner human being, the immortal soul. The new, true human being is the other one within. It is not a kind of higher, more complete, altered or modified version of ourselves. No, it is not a part of us, nor does it belong to us. It is not of this, our world. The other one is the divine primordial principle, a rudimentary remnant of the original human state of life, preserved as a grain of seed in the heart of our being. In this grain of seed, the image, and therefore the promise, for a completely new human genesis lies enclosed. We have said that this grain of seed is neither part of this world field, nor is it part of our personality system. The building materials necessary for letting this grain of seed germinate and for letting the new inner man grow in us, fundamentally differ from the building materials with which the personality builds. Or rather, the personality is actually unable to undertake this work itself. It can only take care that the building site is cleared, ready for building. And this requires that a human being becomes truly silent. What happens then in this silence? Or rather, what can happen in this silence? What if everything that pulls on a human being, everything that asks for or demands our attention, 
pulls on all our emotions, feelings, prompt our thinking. What if all these were to be wholly irrelevant, even just for a moment? To start with, in such a silence it would be possible to hear the call emanating from the elementary, though latent, remnant of our origin from the primordial atom or the rosebud. It is in this moment that the inner other one can make itself known to us. By hearing this call, a longing, another different longing, may be awakened in us, the longing for the original life in and with the Gnosis. This longing can initiate and establish a new focus, a new directedness, and in this way we open ourselves to the radiation power of the all-encompassing divine state of life. A link develops with the primordial atom, the dormant new soul, and with the life field to which this divine principle belongs. In this touch, this connection can, if only in a flash, give insight, a short moment of unification with something that extends farther than our own limits. To many people, this is a special experience, which obviously we would like to preserve. We want to know more about it. We feel enriched and want to preserve this moment within us. We want to tell others about it. And because of it, we probably feel more complete as a person. However, we are unable to seize this new life with our personality. As soon as we try to do so, as soon as we begin trying to cultivate this state of being and try to make it a part of our personality, it disappears. You may perhaps wonder what the meaning of all of this is. Feeling yourself for a short moment linked with a power, the essence of the original life, and then feel it slip from your fingers again. Surely, is it not the intention, the idea, to do nothing with this insight? To do nothing with this flash of recognition? No, certainly not. This touch by the gnosis is the absolute condition for being able to build a new human being, thus becoming truly free from our world field, dialectics, which is subject to the law of rising, shining, and fading. Rosacrucian, however, are convinced that it is not possible in our current state of consciousness in which the reality of the fundamental separation from the original unity is embedded to achieve a state of perfection. True unity cannot spring forth from separation. With our consciousness, we belong completely to this world, the world of opposites, the world of appearances. We are completely subject to the laws of this nature and therefore to changeability. Everything, including ourselves, has a beginning and therefore an ending. Although we sometimes readily and all too easily pull the wool over our own eyes or bury our head in the sand about the many disagreeable characteristics around and in ourselves, we should not overlook the ugly, the imperfect, the incompleteness of this life. For it will inevitably and unavoidably raise its head at, at its given moments. So in order to detach from the form appearances, we should detach from the forces that maintain them in this world of delusion. We should, as it were, seek a new consciousness, which ushers in a new life from another field of life. The new life is not of this 
our ego consciousness being, but of the inner other one. However, we are unable to maintain our eye centrality as well as live out of the potential new consciousness. The perfect cannot unite with the imperfect. After hearing the call, after the gnosis first touch, the work of soul construction has not been accomplished, but it can be the beginning of the process of rebirth, the awakening of the inner other one. For the process of new human genesis to actually take place in us, we shall have to go further and detach from everything that binds us to this world, thus also from our own I being. The path of I demolition, which is also called the endura has become absolutely necessary for real liberation. Ultimately, it is not possible to remain standing with one foot in our familiar sphere of life and the other in the divine nature. The process of eye demolition is, obviously, from our earthly viewpoint, an unnatural process. 
everything in us, after all, stems from and focuses on self-maintenance. Not until a human being, after a long path of experience, has arrived at the border and, as Lao Tzu says, has discovered that he or she suffers pain in the ego and discovers within themselves that no one and no thing can heal this pain and that no one can extinguish this fire until he himself bids farewell to his own I being, not until then can a human being decide to detach from everything that binds to matter and its cycle of birth and death. Walking the path of eye demolition means that we try to stop desiring with our eye, regardless of whether it concerns material or immaterial matters. It is in fact that as soon as we desire something, we forge a bond with what we desire. The desire, the yearning, emanates from the heart. As Mr. Jan van Reichenborg one of the founders of the Golden Rosicross indicates the pupil's greatest struggle is always fought in the heart, through the heart, and with the heart. The purification of the heart, the heart becoming silent, has to come first. This is the power of the silence. It is to quote Mr. Van Reichenborg again, completely withdrawing the heart from the dialectical processes of life and fully devoting the heart to the new downing process of the soul, to the nucleus radiation emanating from the divine principle. By becoming silent and objective towards streams of thoughts, expectations, anxieties, and worries for the past, present, and future, through this inner detaching, the inner other one receives its space. By focusing our longing on another life not originating from our eye, but from the divine principle, we forge a link with the divine nature. A magnetic effect, an attracting and a rejecting force emanate from the desire. Attracting forces from the divine nature and making contact with them inevitably causes a process of rejecting of what, of what is not divine. This enables the eye demolition. However, simultaneously to our going the path of eye demolition, 
the process of transfiguration begins. This means completely detaching from everything that binds us and building the new man, the human being who is in the world, but not of the world. The two processes, the eye demolition and transfiguration, go hand in hand. The personality, who completely contrary to its nature, can and dares to surrender to this force, will gradually, systematically and increasingly live out of the inner other one. He or she hands over their life's guidance to the other one, to the new soul. We, as a personality, do not undertake the actual construction in this process. Our personality is of this nature order and cannot build with the building materials of the divine nature order. We take up the task from inner need without pause and thus clear the space. We try to understand the process that must be accomplished in us in order to remain in permanent self-surrender, that is, giving ourself wholly to it. That is what the Tao Te Ching means by Wu Wei, not doing. That is, not to prevent the process of soul construction with our I being. Lao Tzu expresses it as follows. Therefore, if the heart continuously is not, in other words, free from any earthly inclinations and desires, we can behold the mystery of Tao's spiritual essence. If the heart continuously is, full of desires and earthly directedness, we can see only limited, finite forms. We should always be alert that it is indeed the inner other one that has assumed the guidance and not the pretense of our I self. We cannot walk the path with our I by doing all kinds of things that we think may benefit the development of the new soul, not even by forcing this state of desirelessness upon ourselves. There is no need to force ourselves in any way. In fact, we must not do so. By entering the silence, we initiate a connection with the divine 
nature. This certainly does not mean that we should separate ourselves or withdraw from everyday life. It is in the first place an inner process. And we should particularly seek this inner silence in our ordinary daily life. What matters is where we hold the emphasis in our life. On self-maintenance or on the liberation of the soul. A silent heart is a heart in which the I central self no longer dominates. We certainly do not neglect our daily duties, but neither do we let ourselves be controlled and bound by them. They must now take second place. This is what becoming silent before God means. A silent heart can be open for the forces of the divine nature and with the opening of the soul, the seed grain germinates, the purification process begins. May each and all of us find this silence within ourselves so that for us too, the beatitude from the Sermon on the Mount will truly apply. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God.